Hi, this is Ellis, and this is day 21 of 40 Days and 40 Plants. Today's plant is this Tephra cactus geometricus, which is a type of cactus, and I'll explain much more about it in, later on in the video. But let's begin, begin with today's comment. Grant us, O Lord, our strength, a new love for, of your holy name, so that, trusting in your grace, we may fear no earthly evil, nor fix our hearts on earthly goods, but may rejoice in your full salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So today's readings um, are quite interesting to me, the, the sequence that they're kind of put in. Um, the Old Testament reading um, begins with the message of return to your God, return to your to your faith, and then um, the prophet Hosea kind of explains a little bit more of what will happen afterwards. Um, it's almost a love uh, love poetry between God and Israel. So very interesting imagery there. But the idea being to return to God, and then the psalm is also talking about returning to the faith, and not only that, but not letting anything else infiltrate. And in the Old Testament, a lot of times we come across this idea of physical idols uh, coming into worship. You think of like the golden calf or the um, the images at Babylon. Um, there are so many different um, images like that, or the high places of Asherah. Um, there are, again, just a bunch of different images, and they're usually very concrete in the Old Testament. However, after reading those readings in the context of the following reading, our gospel for today, I feel like it makes a little bit of a difference in terms of uh, the interpretation for those other ones. And it, it was very eye-opening for me. Um, let's see if we get the same reaction as well. So this is the Gospel. This is Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard Jesus, and the Sadducees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbors as oneself. This is much more important than all old burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. So for me, reading this, first of all, of course, you have um, somebody who's um, really educated in the law. We have a scribe, um, or if you will allow me to use um, a weird cognate, a grammarian even, you know, somebody who's really um, studied in all the letters um, and literature, basically comes up to Jesus and asks about what's the most important command, and Jesus, of course, explains it. Um, there are two kinds, the love for God and the love for our neighbors as ourselves. And so those being the top two laws, um, it's just very interesting um, to kind of hear that in the context of return to God and don't let there be any other idols before us. You know, it's not just the same, it's not just saying that, you know, we need to, you know, believe in the crucifix or in, you know, the images of the saints or in icons. It really means, you know, we have to believe and be faithful to love and to love only um, because that is God's command to us. And it, it's just interesting to kind of see that um, it's not just about the golden calf or, you know, these images or stuff like that. It really is about love and the concept of love and not letting any other idol, um, idolatry, such as um, narcissism or pride or greed, get in, that, in the way um, of the love for God. And that brings me to today's plant. So this is a Tephra cactus geometricus. 
um, this is um, this has become one of my favorite uh, cacti of all. Um, it is a kind of cactus, and um, it's been growing a little bit, and it has these spikes. Apparently, a lot of people who take care of them tend to pull off the spikes because they like to keep them um, bare, and I can show you in a little bit. Um, and it's also related to um, the prickly pear, which is really common here in Texas. So this cactus is really interesting because it forms these really geometric patterns. It almost looks like a pineapple without the pines even. Um, of course, now that there's another one growing on it, it um, doesn't look so much like a pineapple necessarily. Um, this one is a little bit wrinkly because it's um, it came through the mail um, to my house. It was actually a gift from my boyfriend. Um, and so I'm kind of watering it slowly so that way it can recover a little bit more and it'll probably plump up a little bit. It was a lot more scrunched up when I first got it. Um, and then it's in this pot, which is a very geometric design, which is very fitting for the name of the cactus being a geometric cactus. So there are a few things that I can kind of draw to kind of um, connect this to um, today's readings. Um, but the main one is the story of this cactus. Um, so... I've always been into cacti and succulents. Um, you know, I've had books for about 15 years that have like um, pictures and um, information about so many different kinds of cacti. And I've tried time and again to take care of them and um, my kind of um, ignorance and negligence has kind of led to them um, dying over the years. And I have some random pots strewn in our backyard that are from when I was trying to take care of some other cacti. But now I've gotten to a point where I've learned a little bit more. Um, but since that was always my, um, I feel like that's always been my backing though, or my grounding um, in terms of gardening has been this interest in succulents and cacti. And so um, even though I'd been doing a lot of um, studying with like bonsai and with um, just house plants and gardening with flowers and vegetables and stuff like that, I hadn't really done that much with um, cacti and succulents. So what I did um, last year was actually go to a cactus show cactus and um, succulent show and I actually saw this cactus um, it wasn't being displayed but it was displayed in the um, not not in the show part it was displayed displayed in the exhibition where they were selling them um, and I saw this cactus and I thought it was I thought it was beautiful it was it's amazing it's such a different one but it's also really pretty to look at and um, I didn't really have the money to buy it at the time it was um, it was very expensive at the at the at the show um but lo and behold um, my boyfriend surprised me with this as a gift um and I'm, i i just like it a lot and so for me um basically by me returning to my roots i've been able to find some plants that i'm really um drawn to and really attracted to and of course this cactus has also taught me quite a bit about um, being patient with growth um, you know, it doesn't grow that quickly. Um, most cacti grow fairly slowly. Um, so it's been teaching me to be a little bit patient. But it's also um, taught me, though, that if I really do return to my roots, I can find some things that are very interesting. And when I return to things like the Bible or um, Christian tradition or even just other people of faith, and sometimes I even learn things from other faiths as well, I find out so many rich things that we have um, that we have in our past there's so many educational moments for us to learn from and there's just so much to know about uh, God's love for each and every one of us and so if we really do return to that law of love we can learn so much more and we will have a much more fulfilled and rich life so again I want to repeat these verses um, they're really famous um, and I feel strange for um, for quoting a quote, um, because this is actually from Deuteronomy, but um, I'll use the one in the gospel. So this is again, Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. 
And so I hope that during this Lent we can take the time to really um, think about what does God call us to do um, through these commandments, the commandment to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we really consider these questions and we really figure out um, how it plays into our lives, then we will really be able to return to God.